Welcome to the Produce On Purpose podcast, where we explore experiencing life being the real you. I'm your host, Randy Atkins Jr., author, teacher, speaker, preacher, and lifelong learner. At the heart of this episode, Be My Guest, lies a fundamental question. Who will you welcome as your guest into the inner sanctum of your mind? Are you welcoming a guest that is going to hold you hostage with fear, doubt, and illusion? Or are you hosting one that is going to bring love, truth, and divine guidance? In this episode, we are going to dive into the power of choice, the divine nature of creation, and your pivotal role of having the Holy Spirit as your divine guide. You'll discover the creative spark within you as a sacred gift and an invitation to co-create your reality with the divine creator. Our dad joke, why did the Holy Spirit go to art school? Because it wanted to help people draw closer to God. Share this joke with someone this week as producers laughter nourishes our creativity, fosters joy and unlocks innovation in our soul. I'm going to begin this episode, be my guest with a relevant scripture. The scripture this time is coming from Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter and the 19th verse. It reads, I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. This scripture provides us an idea that we as individuals are given the incredible gift of free will and the power to make choices that profoundly shape the course of our lives. This verse urges us that we should make a deliberate and mindful choice on one that aligns with the path of life and blessings. It's an invitation to choose the way that leads to a deeper connection with God that has inner peace and fulfillment. When I see this, I see I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. This part is the important part. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. This is such an important scripture that allows us to begin to move into this episode talking about who are we bringing in as the guest into the inner sanctum of our minds. The mind that we have is we can allow the ego, which we fired in previous episodes, to take resident in our lives. But the ego, all the ego does is cause us a lot of fear, doubt, and illusion. And it's easy to identify when the ego is running the show. And we talked about that before. And so today, I want to talk about us hosting the Holy Spirit, hosting God, hosting life. And as we are choosing life, then we are going to not choose or we are going to let go of anything that looks like fear, smells like fear, smells like doubt, or even looks like an illusion that is not real or true. We're going to begin this discussion today about having the power to choose the choice of having who is going to be the guest in your mind. Who are you going to allow through the door of your mind? And the first guest that comes to the door is the ego. Uh, the ego is self-driven. It is one that is fear-driven. It's self-centered in nature. It holds you captive because it wants to lead you into negative emotions, limiting beliefs. It often says that's not the way because it's not realistic. It's going to hold you back from doing a lot of what you thought you could do. It's limiting beliefs. It's a disconnection from the true self. And one of the things that you can really know about as the ego wants to come in, he is going to want to separate you from everything else in the world. But the second guest 
that I want to introduce you to, and I believe you should let be the guest of your heart and of your mind, is the guest of the Holy Spirit. This is in contrast to the ego because it is deeply rooted in love, truth, guidance, and it is the way that leads to peace. When you have the Holy Spirit in your life and you have the Holy Spirit in your mind, it is allowing you to choose to transcend the ego's limitations to transcend the self-centered nature of always looking at situations only from a perspective of what can I get out of it? Instead, you will begin to see situations in a multitude of ways that will allow you to begin to move in a direction of greater joy, greater peace, and a higher level of spiritual self. Yes, you are no longer going to be limited by your body or by what you can think of, but you will also understand that you are part of something much larger. And the Holy Spirit is there to teach and to guide on a consistent basis. So in this section of this podcast, I am looking for you to make the choice to allow the Holy Spirit to be your guest. It's a place where your inner state and the encouragement for you is that you are going to consciously host God. You're going to consciously cast aside all of the chains, all of the imprisonment, all of the turmoil that the ego has, and you're going to choose to embrace a life that is grounded in love, truth, and divine guidance. So I ask that you welcome the Holy Spirit to be your guest and make that choice today. So that's the first area I wanted to talk about today because be my guest is going to be important because it is not something that is going to be forced upon you, but you have a choice to make. And when you make this choice, it will change you forever. So here's the second thing I want you to think about. You have been made to be a creator. It is God's will that you create. And the idea that you should be creating as you are here every single day and anything that stifles you or anything that stops you from creating. And when I say creating, that means that anything that you can do that you can come up with that is new, it's a new idea. It's not something that you've seen before. Sometimes these things are that we've seen before we can build upon, but you're building something new. Have you ever had a great experience of whether it's baking? Maybe you bake something. It's new. It's something that you've never tasted before. Maybe you tried a new recipe that you had never tried before. And maybe you added a little something to it. But it, the, the whole idea is that you begin to embrace your creative potential, your creative nature, and you begin to align yourself with God's will when you do that. Did you know that your creator's will is for you to be a creator, for you to create? And then that will foster a deeper sense of fulfillment. And so creation will be what you will focus on every single day. But you have to remove all of the blocks. That's why we fired the ego before. Because if we remove the blocks, then we can see truly who we are and how creative we all are. We can be co-creators with the master creator who is our God. And so you have a divine invitation to actively participate in a new reality. You know how we always call our personality, but it is really our personal reality. Our personal reality comes from how you embrace your creativity and you can have a personality or your personal reality be one of creativity that comes directly from God, comes directly from the Holy Spirit that you allow to be your guest. So let me explain a little bit about this is that there are going to be ways for you to be uh, involved with the acts of creation. I 
really enjoy being able to learn and to teach new things in different ways. And I try to go out and find ways to explain uh, one concept in multiple ways. And so that I, allows me to be creative because many times I can use an analogy, I can use a metaphor to explain something that may be complex. And for you, it might be that you are an artist or you are a musician or you are a baker or whatever your gifting might be, you can begin to be creative and the Holy Spirit is there to help guide us into that creativity. Your true fulfillment arises when you use your creative abilities to contribute positively to this world, whether it's through your art, your innovation, your relationships or personal growth. The process of creating allows us to express our unique essence. When you are creating, when you are a producer, when you are doing what you were born to do, you are going to uniquely provide an expression of your greatness, of who you are to this world. And you're going to connect with a greater tapestry that has been in existence forever. And it's in these moments that you experience profound joy. This is where joy, this is a sense of purpose and alignment that God has intended for you. And so why should I have the Holy Spirit be my guest? One of the greatest ways is that you want him to be able to allow your creativity to shine in a greater way. When you do that, then you're able to share even more to this world. I think of anyone that you have thought of that has been a creator in this world. I, I think back to the story about uh, Colonel Sanders and KFC. He had an original recipe for chicken and for years he was told no. And in fact, until he was in old age, he was old before he finally had someone to help invest into his recipe. And now how many KFCs, Kentucky Fried Chickens, do you see in this world today? There are many stories like that, that there were many that have creative abilities that have been able to be expressed and shared in this world. And we want to see yours. So the Holy Spirit needs to be welcomed in so that you can be the producer and the creative that you have been born to be. Here's another point that we are going to shift to in this section of our episode is the Holy Spirit is your guide. Have you ever been in a space where you just have been looking, trying to find the right direction? Um, I've been in many uh, different spaces in my life where sometimes I need to find the right direction. I'll never forget my wife and I, we were in Italy, we were in Rome, and we had the Google GPS up, and we were looking for our Airbnb that we were supposed to be staying in, and it was dark, it was night, and for whatever reason, the GPS, the directions, were not very clear, and we were trying to find our direction. How many times have you ever been in a space where you've been trying to find direction? Well, the Holy Spirit should be that divine guidance for us to help us find direction in our lives. Where do we go when we can't find direction? The Holy Spirit is there. It will provide a small voice for you to listen to, and it will tell you exactly which steps you are supposed to take. It's even very clear from whether you wake up in the morning and you're supposed to just stop and allow your body to uh, maybe get its equilibrium and balance. You know, you you have this voice speaking to you. And this is interesting because it could also be the voice of the ego. But you know when it's the voice of the Holy Spirit because it is guiding you into places that will make you feel better that will provide you greater joy. And it is a place of inspiration and wisdom to help you navigate through the complexities of life. So when I think of this role that the Holy Spirit should play in your life, 
it's sometimes what we call it. Sometimes people say I was, you know, I heard something or something told me this. Have you ever heard yourself saying that it was something? And I'm going to say it was the Holy Spirit, especially if it was something that was of divine guidance. And it will align you with the creative endeavors of God's will. When we align with the will of God, we will see God's miracles and his mighty works in our lives. And miracles are things that we would naturally not believe would could or should happen, but they are happening all the time when we allow the Holy Spirit to inspire us and offer us insight or nudge us in the right direction. Have you ever been nudged in the right direction? Like it wasn't a full push. It was just kind of nudging and you were like, you know, I think I might want to go over here. And it just feels kind of natural, more like a flow. The Holy Spirit can provide that for you. So when you welcome him in as a guest, you're going to have conversations with him and he's going to share with you what you can do. And by acknowledging the Holy Spirit as your guide, you will be invited into deeper levels of consciousness, uh, more of the Christ consciousness and of what God was really connected with him. You want to know what the Father and the Son are wanting to have happen in our lives. And when you begin to understand why you are here, the Holy Spirit will provide you a deeper level of creative process. And I think about this because creative process is not something that you can put on the schedule. I've, I've said this uh, many times is that many times the creativeness needs you need time to just sit in silence sometimes. And then the great ideas come. You need time to just kind of rest to where you are not always moving and on the go. So when you are allowed to be a producer and create you then are in a place that you now allow the Holy Spirit to provide instructions to you on a consistent basis. These encounters with the Holy Spirit can influence how you live and how you are to move. And remember, I'm saying he's a guest, so he will not make you do anything that you are not making the choice to do. The question is, are you going to intentionally begin to make choices to align with the will of God in your life, the will of your creator in your life, the will of source in your life? When we go back to source, then you will begin to make greater decisions that will help you in your life, business, in your relationships, in your health, in all that you do. The Holy Spirit will begin to influence that and share you know, you'll be able to share that with this world. And I want you to be able to be the greatest producers that you can be. And one of the ways to do that is to welcome the Holy Spirit into your life. So here are some actionable steps, practical ways to invite this guest in. And I'm really going to ask that you take these practical steps and you write these down and you begin to connect in and be in a tune, uh, attuned to what the Holy Spirit can do for you and your life. So the first thing I want you to do is to spend some time in stillness. This is so important. I remember when COVID-19 happened and we were in our homes all not being able to leave. And um, I, I remember I was just like, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here because I was not used to sitting in stillness for very long. That means without anything else going on, without a, another thought. And I want you to practice truly trying it for one minute first, complete silence, nothing, five minutes, increase the next few days to, you know, 10 minutes, whatever you can increase to where you can sit in stillness. And what you want to do during that time that you are sitting in stillness, I want you to look, listen and look at what you're thinking. Don't try to change it. Don't try to modify it. So the first step is to listen and stillness. That's it. You're not going to do anything else because in this fast paced world that we live in, there is very little time 
that we really take and we say we're going to just be in stillness. And so then I'm going to encourage you to really sit and listen to what the voices are saying. What are the voices that are negative? And what are the voices that are positive, that are full of love? And I, I don't want you to do anything with it initially. So the first step is just to gather information. In fact, in when we do development or uh, I go into a company that needs to um, have some updates or a solution for um, automating their um, software or anything like that. The first step that we do is called discovery. And this is going to be your discovery is sitting in stillness and listening, listening for the voices and the voices that you hear or the thoughts that you can see, you will then understand what they are. And these, this is where you can start to understand where new ideas can come from. And you will also get greater clarity if you do this on a consistent basis to help you with decision making. And it will also start to move you into a place of peace. Why would you get to a place of peace? Because sooner or later, the more you can sit in the stillness, you begin to have a greater understanding and a greater um, ear for the guidance that you should be getting. So then from that space of stillness, I want you to then gather what is serving you. What are the portions of what's going on in your life that's serving you? What are the things and the ideas that will serve you and make you better? And out of that, you can now begin to choose. You can choose to listen to which guests are you going to allow to be resident in your mind. And remember, as we talked about, if there are voices or thoughts or um, inner voices that are talking about love and joy and peace and um, expansion and growth, they are coming from your Holy Spirit's guidance. And those are what you want to start to align with. And those are what you want to continue to make a choice to entertain and pay attention to. And the last area I want you to do is to embrace God's comfort. And this is going to be important for everyone that's listening. There are many things that we all encounter in life. And sometimes you can encounter uh, some very heavy things, some heavy patterns, some heavy pain, some heavy trauma, some grief that we end up with. And here's where you can get some healing in your life is for you to embrace God's comfort. He wants to be present in you. And his presence will bring a greater peace and calm to your life. And when I think of this, I, and, and it's also in the practice of your stillness, you know, after you've taken the time, enough time to just listen to the thoughts, now you're going to welcome in God's comfort, his inner peace, his guidance, and his solace to you. And you're, you're going to listen for his comfort in whatever you might have been dealing with. And the idea is, is that you will begin to let go of anything that is not serving you. Anything that is causing pain or trauma, you're going to consistently let it go. Consistently in your mind, almost take it as a sheet of paper and ball it up and throw it away. And the things that you are wanting to keep, you are going to focus on those things to foster a deeper connection with your comforter. You're going to talk to him and he's going to speak back to you and he's going to provide you messages that is going to let you know that even when you feel lonely, I'm with you. Even when you feel like no one else is with you or around you or cares what is going on, I care. 
And even when you don't feel like you're loved, he's going to let you know that he loves you. And that is going to go so far in your life when you allow him to be your comforter. You invite him in to be the comforter of your life. And through your prayer and your meditation, and you're going to also move in acts of kindness and compassion to others, your daily life is going to begin to change. And you're going to make choices that instead of adversity changing you, you're going to change everything about you around this adversity. The adversity is no longer going to be the thing that rules or runs your life. And you're going to embrace this comfort from him on a consistent daily basis. I'm not saying that this is easy. I'm not saying that it's going to be quick, but I will encourage you to commit to doing this on a daily basis. And you will see changes, but you have to commit from a perspective of understanding that if I commit to the comforter, he's going to make a change in my life. And when I face adversity and with grace and resiliency that comes from him, it's going to be better. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what the struggles might be, he's going to support me through this life's journey. Who are you having to be your guest? Are you going to have the Holy Spirit be your guest today? I encourage you to allow him to be your guest. We've walked through this episode. We've talked about how you can make a choice and how that choice can be something that will help you move through this life in a greater way. And that that choice is the thing that will also allow you to be a creator, a co-creator with God. It will also bring you to a place where the Holy Spirit can be your guide and provide you wisdom on a consistent basis. And then you're going to practice on a daily basis, meditating, being in stillness, prayer with God, so that you can hear his guidance to you. So those subtle whispers that are coming from the Holy Spirit will be the thing that will allow for you to move forward. Allow the Holy Spirit to be your guest today on this episode of Produce On Purpose. Be my guest. I encourage you, encourage someone to allow the Holy Spirit to be their guest. And you also be how the Holy Spirit be the guest in your life. And most of all, I want to make sure that you continue to be the real you and that you will produce on purpose. As we bring this illuminating episode to a close, I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to you, our listeners, your presence, your engagement enrich our podcast journey. And I am truly honored to be a part of this growth and transformation with you. And to ensure that you never miss an episode and it's filled with insights and inspiration, I ask that you hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcast platform that you're listening on at this moment. And I ask that you also leave a review and I invite you to share this episode with your friends and your family and let's create a ripple effect of healing and empowerment together. Also, go visit RandyAtkinsJr.com to get the audiobook in the book called Produce on Purpose Experience Life Being the Real You. Your words have the power to shape the future content of our podcast. I thrive on your input. So if you have thoughts, I want you to share those thoughts with me on www.randyatkinsjr.com. Send me a comment. Give me your feedback. You can also find information about the podcast, information about my book, information about events on RandyAtkinsJr.com. And until next time, remember that every step that you take towards being the real you is steps towards unlocking your boundless potential. Stay tuned, stay inspired, and above all, today be the real you and produce on purpose.